I see a whole change in the thrust of searching for answers about who we are and why we're here. And I think it's good. It, it provides a third way in which to look, you know, at the, if you will, the philosophy of life. Now, I think it's wonderful, and I, I just hope the movement continues to expand. Well, just because I have you here, is it possible? Could you sort of walk us through a typical LDL experience? What would it be like, patient sure. coming in? Sure. Uh, you have a, a, a client who um, calls and wants an appointment, and uh, if they're very busy, it can be difficult. I mean, I had a three or four year waiting list and, and now some of our members are into that same mode, so it can be very difficult because there are so few of us and there are so many people who want this. Now, what happens when a client comes to you and understand they're not coming to you for uh, psychotherapy. They're coming to you because they're curious about what it's like in the afterlife. They may be curious about what happened to a dear relative that has recently died. They may be in a state of emotional trauma if they've just recently lost a child. I mean, there are all sorts of motivations and reasons for coming. But it's not, the idea is not to supplant any um, uh, therapy that they should perhaps be receiving for emotional uh, trauma, if you will, that would require the services of a licensed trained professional over a protracted period of time in their hometown. This is not intended to supplant that. It's intended to provide them with answers about their inner being. One of the things that clients don't understand when they come is that there is a dual nature to all of us. I mean, some of them have a sense of it, but they don't really understand it until they, they have the experience themselves. That we have our brain, ego, if you will, we have a soul ego, and when they are combined, it creates one personality and one lifetime. That's, it helps the person who looks in the mirror in the morning, as I tell students, and they say to themselves, who am I? I don't think I'm the real me. And so you get that type of person that will come to you. But in any case, what happens is that we have what we call an intake where we, we take information about the important people in their lives. We call it a cast of characters. Uh, we want these names because we want to identify them later in the spirit world. So typically, uh, we will go through a standard induction and a lot of deepening because understand that this is not the kind of hypnosis that involves, say, smoking or weight, um, or even working with childhood trauma, because these are generally shorter sessions, you know, up to one hour. We work in generally in the alpha state, either shallow, middle, or perhaps upper. And uh, we explain to the client that they're liable to, very likely to be with us at least three hours, possibly four or five, and they will be in the next state down in hypnosis, which is the theta state. Now, the typical facilitator does not spend too much time with a client going into the mechanics of hypnosis. Uh, we give them a general overview that they're going to be very, very deep, and that's about it. We don't get into a lot of that, but I'm mentioning it here because I think it's good that we understand where we are. And so a good portion of that first hour is spent in deepening and preparing the client to go into childhood, where we will pick a couple of years in their very early life to get a sense of, ans of them answering our question and a feeling of going back in time and recalling events earlier in this life to prepare them to answer questions on a deeper level in not only in former lives but in their life in the spirit world. That's what that's about. So, and it's all explained in my third book, Life Between Lives. And then from there we, uh, we take them into their most immediate past life. Now they may go to another life other than that. Uh, it's very brief. Most of the time when we're doing a Life Between Life session with a client, it is not intended that this will be a long discourse on past lives, okay? 
They have come to us for a different reason. There are a number of past life therapists out there that don't have a clue about life between lives therapy. They think it's a grayish limbo that has no significance. So in any case, um, we then uh, do what I call the crossing. We cross from the death experience into the spirit world, into the afterlife. And it's an interesting and exciting time for the client because it's at this point they begin to really see their soul. Now, what happens then <clears throat> uh, is, is a very kind of consistent reporting of either friends or relatives coming to greet them or their spirit guide, usually both. There's usually what I call an orientation session. It's kind of like a briefing session. I, I think back as of my age to World War II and those bombing missions over, over Europe from England. You know, you go out and it's like going to Earth and going through this very difficult school that we have down here for one lifetime and then you get home and you're debriefed. These pilots, when they came back to land at English bases, were debriefed. How did the session go? How did the mission go? Okay. Did you reach the target? Did you accomplish your objectives? I mean, these are the same sorts of questions you know, we ask. Uh, how, does your how does your guide receive you? Now, I want to make it clear that when a client sees their personal guide for the first time, their immortal teacher, uh, they're blown out of their minds because that, that conscious is never fully asleep. And if it were, we wouldn't be getting answers and responses. They can't believe it. Some of the more religious people may think that they see Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad coming towards them, but they quickly realize, oh no, 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 that's, that's not who this is. This is my personal teacher. This, this teacher has been with me since I was created as a soul. So from there we get information. We, we move from that experience to other interesting aspects of the spirit world. Uh, soul groups, who's in their soul group. People are fascinated to find out who is in this very private sanctuary of souls that can range anywhere from three to 25 souls. The average client has about 15. These are all friends, relatives, you know, spouses, dear friends in this life. Some of them are shocked by who's there and they have been with them since the beginning. And it's kind of like, uh, you know, we hear of, of, of groups that are formed, say, for uh, alcoholics in recovery. You know, there's a certain integrity there that no new patients are added to the group once the group starts. It's that way in the spirit world. We don't have new souls coming in and out all the time. That group stays together. So sometimes it's a real revelation to the people sitting in your chair about just who's in their soul group. And there are other soul groups nearby, affiliated souls. That, that may play an important part in certain lives. There are reasons for that. We want to explore it. So from there, they uh, typically go in front of a group of wise beings. There's all sorts of names for these beings. Um, some call them, you know, the uh, uh, el elders or the wisdom makers or uh, all sorts of wonderful names that they give these wise beings who, in fact, are a step or two above their guides. These are non-incarnating beings, okay? It's about as close to God as we get, incidentally, Rich. And um, <clears throat> there is a, usually a very interesting discourse that goes on. You know, they ask questions, you know, how did you do in your last life? How do you, they're very gentle people. They're not like Hollywood presents them in such movies as Defending Your Life, black robe judges who are ready to punish the poor supplicant coming before them. Hollywood has a wonderful time with these kinds of movies. And I've, I've spent some time with Shirley MacLaine on radio shows, and we've laughed about this because I don't know if you remember, but in that particular movie, she was in charge of the past life pavilion. And uh, I've had some very fun conversations with her. She's a very spiritual lady, by the way. And um, so, you know, there, there's a num all sorts of information that can come out of that. Then there are other activities in the spirit world. It's, it's different for people in terms of uh, just where they might go after a particular past life and what relevance that has for uh, the life just lived. And then a very interesting thing happens that when they're ready to come forward again into the next incarnation, there's an area where they, there's, there's kind of a life selection and body selection area where they have choices of different kinds of bodies and 
who they think they could work best with. And of course, their elders and guides have had a hand in the selection of choices, if you will. And then they come forward into the next life. And it's, um, it's a fascinating process, Rich. I think what's key to all this is that there's such order and discipline upstairs. And it's a very compassionate love relationship. Um, it, it isn't one that involves the kinds of things that we see on earth with a hierarchy of beings who lord it over you and, and gender fear. Um, there is so much forgiveness and understanding. People, we all make mistakes. Some of us make terrible mistakes. And that's all forgiven once we cross over. And there's various ways in which they can help heal the soul that I explain in my books, but I don't need to go into here. But I just want you to know that what clients gain from all this when they wake up in your office after one of these long sessions is they just look and they'll, some of them are crying, some of them are laughing, some of them can't talk. And generally there's just this, wow. I can't believe it. And so then we work with them to, you know, kind of process what's happened. 